All right, we are recording this, and the purpose for this is so you guys can go look at it later. And it's a best efforts basis. It's kind of a legal thing I have to do. We never know if we have a topic here that's going to trigger somebody. And we, of course, we're not trying to do that. But if, if that does happen, you need, need to come out of this webinar if you get triggered for whatever reason. And come back to recording if you wish. Stop, start as you choose, and, and so on. So with that in mind, we start off with an orientation, which I believe Sherry has prepared for us. Is that correct, Sherry? That is correct. Well, please orient us. I would be happy to. Okay, everyone, welcome. If you would, just find a comfortable position, relax, close your eyes, take a deep breath. We direct our attention now to that quiet, peaceful place within us. The place where we connect more deeply with our spiritual healer within, who we refer to as the unseen therapist. To join with this power at that deep level of love, we simply recall a loving moment in our own life for about a moment. We now shift our attention to this webinar. We are all here, joined together in the presence of the unseen therapist to support each other in our ongoing efforts to remember who we truly are. There is power in joining. There is healing in joining. Unseen Therapist, it is our intention to remember our oneness with you and each other. And we ask that you guide us to the highest outcomes of our individual and collective endeavors to accomplish this goal. Unseen Therapist, we look to you to help us identify and resolve any thoughts and feelings that hinder, that block our ability to recognize and embrace our inner magnificence, which is our divine inheritance. To hear your voice more clearly, we merely calm ourselves and tune out the noise of the world. For many, if not most of us, yours is a quiet voice, a deep-seated feeling within a gentle knowing that lights the way. We now sit with this feeling, which is our eternal connection with you. And we will pause here for a moment or two. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sherry. Very nice. I I get so relaxed often when you do that that I somehow forget what I'm doing. So I, <laughs> that's why I have notes. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm noticing here that some folks have been raising their hands already. Hooray! I see um, Marion and Mary and Anne and Nami. I'm wondering if I can get Sharon. You know who you are, Sharon, to raise your hand because we're going to bring you on first. 
we'll wait for we'll wait for Sharon to raise her hand. Okay. Um, uh, normally, what happens? This is just for everybody who's a newcomer here and everything else. Um, normally, what what happens here is is our our members ask ask questions of me and Sherry. Sherry, by the way, is the director of the Gary Craig Official EFT Training Center in the English language. We have several several languages. And so it's sort of a support thing, but this is gonna be a little bit different. It's going to be a discussion between some of our more experienced members and Sherry um, and myself. And it's not really rehearsed. We sort of know what we're gonna be talking about, but it's gonna be just a round table discussion where these members, these experienced people are gonna be talking about how they've been communicating with the unseen therapist. Some of the stories are really quite astonishing. But it's not the, it's the kind of thing that anybody can do given some practice. It isn't though that somebody's just anointed with some special skill. Unseen therapist is part of all of us. It's a matter of us learning how to listen. <laughs> we're, very, we're very good at listening to our egos, <laughs> myself included, by the way. Um, I want to mention one thing. I just, I just got an email this morning. And this wasn't something I was planning on really talking about, but it's on point here. It's a fellow that I've been working with. Very, very serious disease. Um, and it's really gotten to the point where he gets very serious, very serious. Not just, gee, I'd like to learn some more about unseen therapists and gee, wouldn't that be nice and it would help my life. And, and all that's true. He got very serious. His life is on the line. And he is really, from his emails, flipping into, if that's the right term, a very highly spiritual area. And he's writing to me, and he's confused about some things, and we're going to be talking about this as the week goes on and, and so on. But getting very serious about this, he's getting messages. He's getting thoughts. I mean, he'll, like he will have... He's describing he gets thoughts that will come in. Ordinarily, there'd be thoughts of resentments, for example, or anger thoughts or things like that. Or what about all of this kind of thing? And the moment they come in, instead of them coming in and him beginning to dwell on them, which many of us do, okay, they just leave. Here it comes up. But now where is it? It's just gone. That's strange. He doesn't know how to deal with that. It's, it's, it's from out there someplace he thinks it's really from in here. But, but I just I thought I'd point that out because the, the version of this that we have vary all over the place. And I need to make one thing really, 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 really clear to everybody listening in. You do not need to have Hollywood moments and warm fuzzies and magical communication that you recognize and everything else to get results with unseen therapists. The people we're talking to now are getting really good communication. That's what we can all learn, but you don't have to recognize it at these ultimate levels. In fact, we're, we that are discussing it, these are not really the ultimate levels. There's more, more levels still. Okay. In order to get results, this is portrayed for you so that everybody can have an idea of the possibilities involved. But whether or not you're actually there yet does not mean you can't get results with unseen therapy. We have people getting results all the time with it. But we do want to talk about more of the ultimate thing. So what's going to happen is I'm going to bring on Sharon now. Sharon, Sharon um, by way of background, uh, you know, our, our members have known Sharon well for a while. Um, well, here, let, let me just bring you on, Sharon. You and I can talk for a moment. Hold, hold on, let me see. Let me uh, ask to unmute you. There you are. Are you there? Hello. Ah! Can you hear You got me? Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So nice. Um, Sharon, I guess I need to ask you permission, but I think I already have it. But, but I'd like to talk a little bit about your past history, the abuse, and so on. This is a yes. full This is okay. It's fine, Gary. Sure. Okay. I, I'm just going to shortcut the story a little bit, but yeah, um, you are now in your 60s, but somehow, somewhere around, I think it was age 43, you started to get memories. Yes. That's right. Okay. Yeah. 
And you didn't realize it, but you had been severely abused sexually at a very, very young age and for years, but had so repressed the memory yes. that you didn't. And all of a sudden, here comes the memories and lots of turmoil, traumatic stuff with it. Yeah. Got it right so far. Like a freight train, Gary, yes. Okay. So you and I work to begin with, and and you even have part of your story as part of our our self-help sessions that people can learn from and our students can and so on. Yes. And you've transformed that into something very traumatic into, see if I have this right, if I can remember this right, Sharon. There are times when you go into what you call states of bliss, which is yes, the absolute, absolute opposite of where you were coming from. Talk, yes. ab talk about that a little bit in summary form, if you can, just so we get a good sense of that. And then we're, then we're going to talk about your more recent experience. Um, well, I've skipped in and out of the bliss, but, but I think as, as the healing has progressed with your help um, and through working with obviously all the um, sessions, the self-help particularly, I have done many, many times. And each time I've gone in, obtained more benefit from them and so um yeah I keep slipping into a 10-day period was the first one I had a really beautiful blissful place with no worries and everything was just incredibly nice and peaceful um, it didn't last and and life took over and I did slide back and found there was a lot more work to do but I have managed to keep uh, finding small pockets of, I can only call it bliss, where there is absolutely nothing wrong in my life. And at that moment, everything is perfect. They are short-lived. Um, I can't maintain them much as I try. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not able to maintain my extraordinary experience, which lasted, I don't even know how long, a minute or two or five, or there's no time in them, from 1988. But they leave an indelible impression on you, do they not? Yeah, absolutely. They leave yeah. you wanting more, don't they? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I've been trying to get back there, you know, and maintain it for some time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on we go. But in the meantime, as we approach that, as we effort towards that top of the stairway to miracles, my metaphor that we try to climb, mm. We get more and more peaceful in our world. Our life unfolds differently. Many of our physical things start to fade. Some do, some don't, but it's, it's a process and so on. Mm -hmm. Now, come recently, you wrote to me and you had this extraordinary, you didn't call it bliss, but I'm going to call it that just for the moment for a word. But please, see, we're talking about communicating unseen therapists. You got a communication in spades, and we want to really talk about that. So, please, the floor is yours. Talk about it. Could you, Sharon? I can. Um, it was it was the last open webinar. You had changed the music, and it was a Native American. It was on again today. Um, as I came and began to listen to it, the music just seemed to reach right into my soul. It, and I, I was desperate to find out what it was. I found out because Sherry answered somebody's question. I downloaded the track and I listened to it. Right, let me interject. I just found me, it absolutely let, beautiful. Let me interject just one, one second. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. But I've had sorry. people have, have written to me and they said, where is this music that Sharon was talking yeah. about? Well, here is the CD it came from. Okay. Native Visions. That's it. So you can download it, but on the, on the back of Rhythm it are, of the heart. are several things. And the, what, 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 the, fifth, the fifth one, I think, is called fifth. No, the fourth one, Rhythm of the Heart. Anyway, I think you downloaded that all by itself, correct? That's the piece you were talking about? Yeah, from it where, is, yeah. From, from where? From Amazon? I mean, tell people yeah, so they'll yeah. know. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but they, people wanted to know that. Yeah, it is available on Amazon. Um, Amazon Music, actually, yeah. I got it through there. Okay. Rhythm yeah. of the Heart. Uh-huh. All right. I'm sorry to interrupt you, I, but people it's are going to okay. ask. People are asking, so please, please, here comes the music, then what happens? 
Right. And so then that was that. And then I went to bed. Um, and when I was laid in bed, I just got the notion. And it was more, it wasn't a request. It was more an insistence. Listen to the music. And so I had to wait, get up. Wait, the, and the insistence from Unseen yeah. Therapist you're speaking of? Yeah, yes, it was. Okay, it so was so an, inst an instruction, let's say that. An instruction, not, not a suggestion. Okay. An instruction. Okay. Listen to the music. So I got up, got my phone, headphones, went back to bed, plugged in and switched the music on and had the most beautiful, exquisite experience. Um, the music started to play and immediately in my head, Unseen Therapist was there, kneeling on the floor. She motioned to me to lie down and I lay down on the floor and she put her left hand onto my head and somehow that told me that I was completely safe. And then the music changes at that point and she put her hand out, but it was, it was a really gentle two-fingered approach. It didn't come towards my hand. It came towards the centre of my body. And then she seemed to have hold of my hand and my soul just rose out of my body. It was just quite incredible. I turned around to look at myself and there I was laid on the floor, obviously fine. And, and I look back at myself and it sounds really strange, but I look like a, a genie out of a bottle. I was only half a body and the bottom of me just sort of stopped into a spiral. Uh, I was holding her hand and we just just floated away and and we we danced and and uh, we were just in the most beautiful place just filled with color and music there were no forms or shapes or anything identifiable just a, an absolutely um beautiful feeling I felt complete uh, and and um, safe beyond measure. Um, I felt as if I knew this place, as if I'd been there before. Um, and we floated around for a while, and then the music changes in this track, and the music changed again, and we floated down to the ground, but it didn't look like the ground. Um, do you want me to carry on? No, yeah, please, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, the, and then... Um, there was a lady standing with her back to me and she had a really long plait of hair down her back. And we walked towards this lady. I didn't think anything. And she turned around and it, it was a lady from way back in my past who I'd met when I was very small. Um, I saw her for about a week for five years when I was really young, probably from about four or five she came to stay at our house for a week she was very kind to me which um i didn't have at my home at that point so she was really really special and yet somehow she'd gone out of my mental knowing I, i'd just completely forgotten her and she turned around and i was like oh, gosh it's you and it was just i just the 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 love that I felt just completely filled me up and she was just smiling at me um, and there was something about this Native American uh, connection and she she it it was a knowing through minds it wasn't words in any sense and she sort of pointed to the plan and she said didn't you realize and she was laughing. I said, no, I didn't. And then that was that. And she was stayed with me. And then we moved further on. And then there was another lady, and it was my nan, who was the best person in my whole life. Um, and the, the, the really special thing was that I, can't, I haven't been able to remember my nan's face, and I don't have a photograph. Um, and so she turned around and 
and now I've got her face, I've got her back, and um, and the three of us were together, and it was very obvious, as I say, not in words, that we three had been together in in this culture. I think at some time before. This is like perhaps a past life you're speaking of i hesitate to say that gary but i don't know how else to interpret okay. it yeah right. um and then that was it once i'd seen her and 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 the the love the acceptance the beauty of it all it was absolutely overwhelming and then the music changed again and it started to come to an end five minutes and 38 seconds it is so and then she just led me gently back and laid me down. I could see me laid as, I, as we came back to, to where we started. I was still there and, and she just brought me by the hand and, and my soul just laid back into my body. And as, then the, the music stopped and, and I was just in heaven. Beautiful. Sharon, let me ask you a question or two mm. about that. Yeah. You used the term safe or safety a time or two throughout of that. Throughout yeah. That. Yeah. And I remember when I had my spiritual experience back in 1988, I don't think I used the term safety, mm. but it would have been a very good term. It was though there was nothing to be concerned about. It mm. was though everything was taken care of. There yeah. was no worries. Like, what do you do with the, I mean, how do you pay the mortgage? Okay. <laughs> there were no worries. There were no conflicts with anybody. There was no attack. There was, these things would have been impossible. Mm. And that's what I think, that's what I would have meant. That's what I heard when you said safety. Would you, would you agree with that? Would you add something yes. to it? Um, yeah, I would say there was nothing else. There was nothing other than absolute pure love um, and just sort of beauty, which sounds strange, but everything, because everything was so loving and pure, it, it just was so beautiful. How would you, how would you, I want to use, I'm going to use another term for mm. this. And you and I haven't talked about this, so just do your best with this question. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. sorry. sorry to hit you with something, but All right. but um, as we as we experience this world that we see, the world of separation, the world of human beings and the earth and all of this, mm -hmm. which I call in my book the illusory world, the dream, and, and and so on, we consider that to be real. Okay. We, will, we, have, we have phrases where we will get real, okay? Or the reality is, and, and we'll use that phrase here, referring to this experience as real. Mm -hmm. Now, you're talking about an experience with the unseen therapist, a communication, a description of safety and, and, and ultimate love, mm -hmm. you use terms like this. Mm -hmm. Is that, that real? Was more real. That, that was more real, Gary, than anything I have ever experienced yeah. in my life. I didn't, I didn't want to put words in your mouth, okay? But in my experience, that experience, albeit brief, mm -hmm. was real. That's what real mm -hmm. really is. And when you see what real really is, then this experience that we're calling a dream, you know, in our course, in my book, and quantum physics, and mm -hmm. all of that, you know, you really get it. You really yeah. get it. This experience that we're having right at this moment, you and me talking as seemingly separate bodies, when in fact we're all part of a oneness bliss where there is no and are no worries. And oh, <laughs> it's, it's hard to recognize that when you're, when you're seemingly stuck in this, this world, but it's hard to see that. But that's real. That's real. Mm -hmm. Compare if you would. It's another question you're not expecting. Because you talked about love and at a different level. Mm -hmm. We have in the human world, love. We pursue love. Love from another person. Love from our pets. We love a painting. We, there's love, okay? 
Compare that love, human forms of love, if you can, with this other love that you've called pure love. Can you compare them? They just don't compare, Gary. There isn't a way to compare. It's all, to me, it's almost like we need a different word for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we do. There's love with a capital L, which is different than love with a smaller L, which we're experiencing. That's a way to say yeah. it, maybe. Yeah. All right. Yeah, massively so. There isn't a comparison. The two are, uh, can't really be discussed in the same conversation. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I've got and a so, really good... Go ahead. Uh, no, you're please, well, I've please. just got a really good little addendum to all of this that only came to me today when I was thinking about it and I just thought, I don't know how that happened because I'd like to have it happen again. And I've got two words in my ear and they were, you asked. And I thought, did I? And I absolutely did, Gary. I've been asking for months to be allowed to travel outside of my body. But what I had in mind was the experience that you had. I wanted to be in the presence of the creator. I wanted to feel that ultimate love that you had described. And I actually think I have felt it, but I didn't feel as though I was in the presence of the creator. But that's what I've been praying for, for want of a better term, asking for certainly every night. Uh, I was shocked when I got the two words to realize that, yes, I had been asking for it. Well, oh, the word, words were you asked. In, you asked, yeah. At, with an E-D on the end. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. So what you, what you, okay. I misinterpreted that, misheard that slightly. Okay. Sorry. So, so what, you're, what you're saying is that this came to you today. You know, how do I get all this, et cetera? And you just mm. said, you asked, which is what you did. I did. Okay. Now, that is, thank you. Thank you. I get extra kisses for you. Okay. That, yeah, I that is you a, would, Gary. <laughs> that is a great intro mm. to, you know, what we're going to be talking about today is this to ask. Now, the unseen therapist, as we are learning, is always, always, always guiding us. Never not guiding us mm. always we don't see it okay mm. because we aren't number one we aren't asking we don't know how to ask we're learning how to ask but number two we aren't listening <laughs> our ego is taking over our ego wants to stay separate our ego wants to da 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 mm. and we have to learn to shift from the messages of the ego to the message of this more glorious place mm. And I want to thank you with everything in me because you kicked this off beautifully, Sharon. Good. I think we should have Sharon Appreciation Month. <laughs> I would just like to add, though, Gary, that this is it's a very rare thing, isn't it? You know, I've been, I've been doing this a long time and, and a lot, and I've never had anything like this. So it's, it really is um, unusual. Well, what is unusual? Yeah, and you're right. Yeah, I, I, I'm, mm. let, me, let me validate that, et cetera. But I also yeah. want to add what is unusual is our ability to listen. Mm. What is not, un, it's always there. That is not unusual. Right. What is unusual yeah. is our ability to let it in. Mm. That's, that's what we're aiming for. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And, and people get varying degrees of that. And I, I have to emphasize again for listeners in. Gee, I haven't had that. And I don't know when I'll get that. And I'm not doing it right. And I'm failing or something. No, you are not, 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 not. You are, you are efforting at this. And that's where you begin. And yeah. whether you, you can live decades more and never get something you just got, Sharon. That doesn't mean mm. you aren't getting results. That doesn't mean you aren't asking. It means you aren't listening well yet. <laughs> okay. mm. that's, and that, that applies to me, by the way. That applies to me. Um, I, have, I had my spiritual experience, 1988. It's pretty well known. Those who have read my book and so on. Yeah. I have had just little glimpses of it in the meantime. But I'm trying to get back there myself. Now, we're going to bring on 
you know, our, our, our other experienced people here in a moment, but I'm going to talk a little bit about how this experience, how we communicate with unseen therapists, whether or not we get this more blissful thing you're talking about, how that varies from person to person. It varies because our ability to listen <laughs> is different mm -hmm. from one person to another. For example, if I want to sit down and ask unseen therapists about a answer to a problem for myself, mm. I'm not very good at that. Because what happens, and I just recognize this, my ego is up, my ego has the solution already. Okay. And so, so there it is, there it is, there it is. So I never really know if I'm getting guidance or my egos, you know, da, 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 da. I never really know. But I have learned that she has learned <laughs> that the way to ex answer my question is not to answer it when I've got all this competition going on. Maybe the next day, maybe the next hour, maybe the next week, I will see, so I'll read something in the newspaper. I'll read a headline or something. I will, I will see something on television. I'll have a conversation with somebody like you and somebody will say something, even though it seems to be so casually said. It's like it's being yelled at me almost. It's all capital letters. There is my answer. I, I'm not listening at the earlier time. I am listening. Of course. Of course. Another thing she'll do is, and this is what I first recognized this came years ago, even before I had my spiritual experience. I would be on stage. I'm sorry. It's, it's still. This was after my spiritual experience. I would be on stage in the days we were doing mostly tapping. And I'd have somebody, and cameras are on, are, are on us. You know, and there's 500 people in an audience and all this kind of thing. I got somebody up there with an issue. And, and you know, the way the ego world works, it better, it better be good. We're on film. <laughs> you better do it right, Gary. <laughs> okay. I learned that if I sat there and tried to use my ego reasoning to bring up the right issues and do the job well, I realize I, I learned the hard way that I'll that I will have a problem. Okay. And I'll look foolish and bad because I'm not I'm not really turning this over to a higher power. I'm trying to have my ego do the job. <laughs> so I learned just because I had to learn that I had to just turn this over. And what will happen is this client is in front of me and they're talking and they'll say something and it's it just like they're it's once again, it stands out. It's like, go there, Gary, go there. Or a notion will occur to me, go there, go there. And I just rely on that and I do it. And that's people come up to me later and, and wonder how I have all this magical talent. I don't. <laughs> I finally surrendered, if you will, <laughs> to something that has a lot more wisdom than I'll, than I'll ever have in this, in this human form. Anyway, Sharon, anything more you want to add before we... No, shift? no, that's it. Thank you. All right. Big hug to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sharon. Now, we have four other people that have raised their hand. Many of them you've heard of before here. Uh, Mary McGrory, why don't you raise your, raise your hand, Mary, so people can see you there, okay? Ann Ryan, raise your hand. Nami Osakabi and Marion Billich. All right, good. Now, the four of the five of us actually had a conversation here recently where we were talking about our various ways of listening, getting messages from uh, the unseen therapists. And so we thought today we would just have this round robin discussion. I mean, we're going to start it with Marion, like we did before. Marion's going to bring a few, few thoughts. The others of you just um, I'm going to ask you all to unmute right now, as a matter of fact, all of you, so you can just unmute yourself. I think you can mute and unmute as you go through all of this. Uh, where am I? I think I got you all. Marianne, do I have you yet? Okay. Okay. All right. So let's just begin with you, Marianne. Uh, uh, talk a little bit about your experience listening to unseen therapists and, and the other three of you, anytime you want to chime in or Sherry, Sherry as well, please uh, just chime right in. 
We'll just have this round table discussion. No rules, just whatever shows up, go. Okay. Marian, okay. go. <laughs> I wish you had told me I was gonna talk first. <laughs> um, Surprise. Actually, what I'd like to share is a recent experience. It's something that happened the other day, which I think illustrates one of the many ways that we get messages from the unseen therapist. Because it was so, it's so exciting for me. Um, and then I'll talk more about what it means. But as most of you know, who are in my groups and Gary, you know, I'm always working on connecting to the unseen therapist as much as possible and as often as possible. And I've been working on it for over a year. And sometimes I do really well and I can do almost a whole day, very much listening and, and connected and aligned. And then I forget, I forget to do it. So a few days ago, I got a song, an earworm. If any of you don't realize what an, the term earworm, it refers to a song that gets stuck in your head. We've probably all had that. Uh, it just gets stuck and you can't get it out of your head. And often people find it annoying after a while. Well, that certainly has happened to me. But this time a song came in my head. It was a song from my youth called Build Me Up Buttercup. Those of you who are old enough to remember that song. Um, and there was one line in that that kept going through my head. And excuse my singing, but worst of all, you never call baby when you say you will, but I love you still. And that's it. <laughs> she, I keep saying I'm going to talk to her. I keep saying I'm going to call her and I forget. Um, and that song just kept going in my head and often and often. But there was another part to that song right after where she says something about um, don't let me down. And I thought, well, that doesn't sound right. It doesn't seem, I thought she has infinite patience. So I asked the unseen therapist, how about those lyrics? And she said, well, that part of the song, that doesn't apply. The song's not perfect, but it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, which is wake you up. And it is, it's waking me up. It, I even hear it in my sleep. But when I hear it, it's often when I need to stop and say, okay, am I thinking about something fearful right now? Or am I upset with somebody and not working it through? It always seems to pop in my head as a reminder that there's something I need to work on. And it's just such a joy. It's not annoying like most your worms are. And it's just a gift that she's given me. And it's such a lilty, happy song for people who, uh, who know it. So, so that's been wonderful. So that's well, one of the ways that yeah. she can communicate. You also, as I recall it, have another song. Slow down. You move, <laughs> you move too, too, fast. too fast. Got to make the morning last. <laughs> yes. that's, that's the one she gave me when I was asked her a question about what can I do? I'm so exhausted and I don't know what to do. And that, that was what she sent me, that song. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and that comes in my head too every once in a while, but not like an earworm. This is almost in the background all the time. And normally I would find it annoying, but I'm finding it helpful. Yeah. So that is one of the many ways that the unseen therapist communicates with, with me. And that, Another but, way, you know, go ahead. I'm sorry, that, that, by the way, is unique. I must say nobody gets a song, but that's, that's a way she has found to communicate with you. <laughs> Just like mm -hmm. she, with me, with me, she'll, it'll come through somebody else's words. Uh, yes, uh, uh, that happens to me too, though. Uh -huh. Okay. Will. Yeah. But also another thing that happened recently, which is a good example of how she can communicate, is through things that happened to me in my life, which is similar to you getting a headline that's meaningful, Gary. Um, and this is something that my group uh, remembers me talking about last week. I was sitting in my bedroom in an apartment in Manhattan, and one side of, of, the, of the wall was toward the kitchen and there was somebody cleaning the house, the apartment. And I was very scared because um, I'm a transplant recipient and very scared of getting COVID. And here was this person on the other side of the wall. And then the other side of the room was a beautiful window overlooking a courtyard with trees and there were birds chirping. And 
the unseen therapist said to me, you have a choice. You can focus on one side of the wall and the danger and the fear, or you can focus on the other side of the wall and look out the window at the trees. And there was a morning dove and it was just lovely. And that was another way she made her point to me. Um, that that is, is actually, that's, that's actually something like what Sharon was talking about, but I'm going to, she has a choice. We didn't talk about this when Sharon was on, but she has a choice. She can focus on whatever the problem is of the day. Okay. And we all get them. <laughs> they show up every day. Okay. <laughs> or she can focus on this blissful moment that she had. Uh, and her experience is going to be whatever she focuses on that. In fact, that's just sort of a standard little bit of psycho speak, if you will, pop, pop psychology or et cetera. You get what you focus on. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, but it's true. And yes. unseen therapist is now telling you, well, you can focus there if you want to on this other stuff, but you know, go over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your experience is much better, correct? Yes, it was much, much nicer. I much prefer listening to the morning dove mm -hmm. than the vacuum cleaner of the person who <laughs> might give me COVID. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, so I know those are specific examples and not a general point about listening to the unseen therapist, but we will obviously get into all of that. It's just, I was so excited about this experience the last few days. I wanted to share that with everyone. Yeah. So. Well, you've got more to share. I know uh, I, I, uh, she's not expecting it, but I'm going to ask Mary to chime in right now. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, that Mary was talking about in the time we all got together previously, which I think would be very, very useful. Mary, is the fact that at first you didn't have the kind of trust. You developed trust over time. But at first, this was a, you know, well, explain your journey there, would you? How you, how you got from, I don't know if I could trust any of this or listen to any of this to where you are now. Yeah, for sure. Um, it was really difficult in the beginning um, because I think specifically because I was working on my own. I was trying to figure it out, couldn't get it together. And it was then when I started joining groups and seeing other people using it and accessing her that I was able to start building my own confidence. Yeah, you're speaking of the practice groups we have within our, our membership. Yeah, that changed everything. That absolutely yeah. changed everything. When right. I was trying to figure it out on my own, it was really, really difficult because, you know, is it me talking? Is it my internal chatter? Is it the unseen therapist? And working with clients also, I was a bit nervous of doing it in case I didn't get it right. So the practice groups offered me the opportunity to test the water and to realize that even though some of the images that I might get or some of the words that I might receive, uh, might have received, might have been very strange, they nearly every single time hit home and help the person to connect to something that was not clear in the beginning. So that was really, really helpful, but really built my confidence. Let me, uh, you know, there's more you have to say, but I'm going to, give a little example here. This was years and years ago. And it's a story I've told, I've told often. I was on stage and on film and all this stuff. And like I talked about earlier with a client and, and we were trying to work on her issues and all of that. And I kept getting the notion in my head, sister, sister. Okay. So I said, well, okay, I'll go. For, I didn't know where it was coming from. We hadn't talked about her sister or anything like that. So I said, well, shouldn't we be talking about your sister? And she looks at me with this quizzical look. She says, I don't have a sister. Okay. So, so talk about not having confidence. Here I get this notion and I'm going to, I'm on film and everything else. And the sister comes. Okay. And she didn't have a sister. I said, well, okay. I passed it by, but I kept getting the notion sister. Like so there was something about her sister. Maybe it wasn't her sister. Maybe it was somebody else's sister. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it was. But as the, as the session unfolded and the conversation moved from one place to another, it turns out she had a very big issue with a nun, sister so-and-so. It was a really big deal. Well, there it was, and it was, it was central in what we were talking about. And I, I, so I got the notion of sister and it just kept coming up and coming up and coming up. So that's a place. That's a place where 
that kind of experience starts to give you a little trust in all of this, okay? Because, because I got shot down to begin with, you know, in public <laughs> and on film. Um, and yet, yet I had enough experience to know there's something about it that I need to lean on here. I just can't let it go. Maybe it'll show up later or something. And indeed it did. I'm just, I'm just telling you that because some of these things come out of the blue and it's, it's a little <laughs> challenging at first to hang in there, you know, but after a while they fall into place, your trust grows. So I interrupted you, Mary. I just wanted to give that little story. Keep going. No, it's fine. You know, it's important to realize that as you mentioned earlier, working on yourself, you got to get yourself out of the way and that's always going to be a big challenge. Yeah. So if you have the opportunity, if you're not in a group, if you have a friend or someone who'd be curious to try it with you and just make it into a kind of game mm. and just, you know, like write down sister, make a list of the strange messages or images that you might see and then play with it and, and take your time with it. Don't brush it away straight away and say, oh, God, I don't know what that sister thing is. It means nothing to me. You know, take your time, play with it and say, well, let's do word games with sister. What other kind of sisters are there? And there you go. You might come up with that. but. I think it's really, really important doing it with other people. I'm not, I'm not talking about professionally here, but with, you know, colleagues, friends, where you can really have a safe space and test the water and, and just feel like, well, what does that mean? And, and give it the time for the sense of humor, the unseen therapist's sense of humor to come through or um, for clarity to come through. And as you practice more and more, your doubt will start reducing and reducing and you'll start relaxing more and then you'll start to see more of a sense of humor coming through because it's not all serious we take yeah. it so seriously but taking it seriously we have high expectations and we're like trying to control the situation as you said with your ego and you know i'm going to fix this and i'm going to make this happen that's not how it happens you gotta let go relax and laugh a little bit about the fact that you know i don't know what that means well I recall, Mary, I'm going to ask you to bring up your little thing. There was a time when you asked, speaking of unseen therapist humor, there was a time when you asked unseen therapist for something and you got nothing. Talk about that, would you? You remember that? No. No, I'm talking about Marion. Marion. Oh, me. Yes. I thought you said Mary. I thought you said Mary, too. Yes. There was. There was a time... um, I asked a question. I don't remember what it was about. And, and I got no answer whatsoever. And that's unusual. So I tried again and I still didn't get an answer. And then I asked, why aren't I getting an answer? And she said, well, you're not going to listen to me anyway. So I give you the answer. <laughs> now she said it humorously. She wasn't judgmental. <laughs> <laughs> but she made her point. Yeah. And what's interesting is this, this world especially when we're dealing with clients that come with a lot of traumatic stuff in the background. This, this world is not a nice place in lots of ways. Okay? And there's lots of tragedy, trauma, and so on, if we focus on it that way. And it's not to, it's not to um, dilute the seriousness of things. But on the other hand, if we can use humor and see it through a different set of eyeglasses sometimes, we can lighten up about something that is so serious and so big and so heavy that the mere lightening up with a little humor is therapeutic in and of itself. Okay. Anyway, I'm sorry, we, we digress from Mary. Mary, more, please. <laughs> um, okay, so what I wanted to share as well was um, Nami was talking about uh, in one of our groups how she asks, she, she's much more patient than I am. I expect an answer straight away and I pretty much get my answers very quickly and they come in fast. I see images, I see strange images. Um, and then sometimes I don't get it, like what you're talking about. And a really good question to ask that Nami taught me was, is there anything more? So just because you get an answer the first time doesn't mean that that's it. You're only going to get one answer. So ask to have more information. This isn't clear. Can you give me more clarity? Uh, I didn't get that. That doesn't make any sense. I need your help. You aren't limited to just one question and you can keep asking, is there anything more? Is there anything more? And I think that's hugely freeing because 
depending on your background, for those of us that have had, you know, strong religious backgrounds, uh, particularly Catholicism, we're led to believe that we shouldn't bother, you know, or ask too much, you know. So this is a really interesting way of getting past that and saying, well, I want to know more and I deserve to know more. So please yeah. tell me more. Yeah. You know, it's a loving space. So. And. Going back a bit, if I had thought in my sister example that I should be asking for more, and I wasn't thinking of that at the time, I'd say, "Well, what do you mean, a sister?" She said, "No sister, go, go give me that." <laughs> but I'm, you know, I'm on stage and nobody knows I'm talking to the unseen therapist or or whatever. Mm. Um, so it's a little woo woo to begin with. But if I thought about it, I'd say, I would start asking internally. <laughs> Did you did you lead me astray here? Are you are you trying to be funny with me? <laughs> you know what's going on? What's going on? Anyway, it worked out the way it worked out, so it worked out worked out fine, you know. So Gary, if I might jump in. Sure. Um, when you were talking about uh, hearing sister and oh my gosh, do I I'm being filmed, I'm on stage, people are watching, ego is involved. Do I just trust and say this? And you said something very key, and that's a big tip for everybody. This does take practice. It does take experience. And you said, my experience said, just go ahead and say it, and whatever happens, happens. Um, I, In my experience of developing faith and trust in what I was hearing, I remembered years ago in a message circle where we were all going in and listening and giving messages that we got to each other. And even Mary said, it's very helpful to work with a practice group where you're working with other people and you're saying things and they'll either tell you you're right or it doesn't feel right. Well, I remember this one practice, uh, this prayer group. And I said to a woman, I said, I'm getting a message for you. And I'm seeing an image in my head of you and another woman, you're sitting on a beach in chairs and you're drinking, uh, you know, a drink with an umbrella in it. That's what I'm seeing. And she said in front of the group, no, I don't relate to that. It makes no sense to me. Uh, it's wrong. And, you know, of course, my ego's taken a hit. I saw it so plainly. And I said, well, I'm sorry. You know, I can only just say what I'm getting. After the group was over, she comes up to me, no one's hearing this confession, and she says, you're absolutely right on. <laughs> she said, I have been wanting to take a vacation with a girlfriend of mine, but my husband says no. And I thought that was where it ended. But if you're seeing me in a vacation type image on a beach with a drink with a girlfriend, <laughs> that must mean that I get to go. This is like the best message in the whole world that you gave me. And I thought, well, I'm glad you got it. But she says it to me privately and the whole group, she's saying, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. Nothing. <laughs> oh, God, you know, my ego took such a hit. But ultimately, it was right. So that's how you develop the uh, you get the experience. You gain the confidence when you just put it out there, right or wrong. But quite often it's right. <laughs> yeah. In the meantime, there's a practical thing. If you're, if you're with a client or a friend or something, you're trying to do this and you're getting these messages or whatever, and you don't want to look stupid. Okay. And that's a really big deal. That stops a lot of people from moving forward because they want to, uh, I don't want to say that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> what, what if it's wrong? What if it's just my ego talking? What, you know, uh, what if unseen therapist is pulling my chain and wants me to look better, whatever. Okay. That, that wouldn't be the case, that last one, but I developed over time, in the earlier time, earlier years, and even now, I will say something like, well, I'm getting this notion of sister, but I might preframe it with, well, you know, I, 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 I'm getting this notion. I don't, I'm not sure what to do with it. I don't know if it's right or wrong or whatever, but I, I keep getting the idea of sister coming up. Should we be talking about your sister? Now, that's preframing it first. That's giving me a way out. If it is not on point, well, okay. So I just had this notion. So we just go on. Okay. So you learn after, after a while that you can frame your 
message <laughs> to your client in a way that allows you to back right out if that's the case, if you need to. And then, of course, if sister comes up and it's, it's appropriate, well, okay, it was appropriate <laughs> as time goes on. But, you know, you sort of, to begin with, until you develop your trust, you sort of need to have a way to schmooze it in there so you don't look bad. <laughs> okay. I, I agree with you, Gary. I do yeah. that also. I make it very clear that I have no idea if this is meaningful or not, but, and I'll say it, but sometimes what I do is I'll get an, an image or words, and I don't know if they apply to this person, but I'll use it as a kind of hypothesis that maybe this is relevant to this person. And I look for the rest of the session to see if there's a place to bring it in. And yeah. sometimes later in the session, it'll pop up. Yep, that was what, what it was. Yeah, yes, yes. That's another way to use those intuitions. I want to... I want to shift for a second to a little different way that I get. And then we're going to, because this also relates to something that, that Ann Ryan happens as well. Uh, I didn't realize that this was years ago, long before I had my spiritual experience and so on. I was in the investment business, but my high school football coach, who was very, very dear to me, um, was retiring. And I was called two days before, but I'd like to come down and say something. It's a retirement dinner and all of that. Sure, I didn't know what to do, but I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do a poem. Okay, well, I don't, I don't write poetry. I never wrote poetry to speak of before. But that just occurred to me to write a poem. So I sat down and, and within an hour, within an hour, I just started writing this poem. Da -da -da, and the ideas just flowed to me. Now, it wasn't perfect poetry. Everything didn't rhyme just right. And the meter wasn't just. A, but it flowed really well. And the ideas just coming out, coming out, coming out, coming out, coming out. It was as though it wasn't me writing. I didn't even know anything about unseen therapists. It was as though I had such affection, such love for this man. I'm going to get emotional just talking about it. But, but I wanted to do something public like this, these words just came out. May I tell you a story about a voice that I hear has often been with me for the past 20 years. And it was 30 <laughs> years at that time. Um, so it just flowed out. It just flowed out. Within an hour, that's the kind of thing that would normally take two or three days to write something like that. Came out in an hour, maybe a little more, I don't know, but wasn't very long. And the next morning I woke up I looked at it again and I spent about 30 minutes tweaking it, making sure a couple of things rhymed well and the, and the meter was right. And I changed a few words around, but that was it. That was it. And I learned at that point, not really realizing unseen therapist was around that poetry was a way that I could communicate and with something beyond myself. And so those of you who are on our newsletter and website and stuff, you'll see from time to time I do, poems i write poems down and when i write them down they're never very difficult i don't have to sit there and just they pretty much flow like my poetry to my coach okay they pretty much just flow and sometimes i'll start with an idea and i'll just get no no wrong idea gary and i'll just shift ideas da, 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 da. here we go and then i got to go back over it maybe the next day and you know tweak a little whatever and there's the poem but the poem, you know, might be a short little poem, but it's the kind of thing that might take several hours maybe to do. It takes me less than an hour total. So that's a way. It's a way that I'm communicating with unseen therapists. She's allowing me through this poetry to do this. Now, some people are able to do what's called automatic writing. They'll just sit down and start writing and the actual words are all dictated, you know, perfectly. I don't have, I haven't developed that at this point, but Ann Ryan has her own version of that as well as other things. So Ann, could I just put the ball in your lap and can you talk about yeah. that for a bit? Sure. Um, you, yeah, sure. Gary. Um, I don't know when it started happening. You know, I mean, when, when I started off with the unseen therapist, I would close my eyes and because I wanted to remember either for myself or someone I was working with, I wanted to be able to like remember what had happened, open my eyes after a few minutes 
and I'd make some notes. I don't know when it changed, but it did. And now what happens is I close my eyes, you know, very briefly, and then I take the pen and the unseen therapist guides the pen is what, what I say. It's like, like she speaks through the pen. That's all I can say. I hold it. Sometimes it pauses and it's almost like she's kind of choosing between two words and then off it goes again. Um, so then if I'm working with someone or if it's myself, it's, it's there as a record or it's there as, oh, this is what she said. And I will just recount it back. Um, and it just feels really natural. You know, if somebody's really good at football and people say, wow, it's amazing how you're so good at football, but they're just good at football. Mm. Like, it's just a way that it happens for me. I don't think it's better or worse than any other way. It's really um, very convenient and very handy because it really is, you know, we always say when we work with people, it is through us and not by us. And it just bypasses a lot and it allows it to really just come through um yeah and then sometimes as as um so so there is that part which is eyes closed connecting the unseen therapist this is what she wants fed back to someone I'm working with or what she wants me to know but she also has started in in more recent times you know people are uh, maybe explaining their issue what's going on and I'm taking a couple of notes and sometimes like she'll put something she'd guide me to put something in a particular part of the page. Um, And often there's like two sides and the two sides would be like something in opposition. And whenever I hear that, like someone says, oh, I really want to be independent. I feel so trapped in my work. You know, I just, I'd love to travel the world, but oh, I've got all these things to do. When there's this, what we'd call duality. She, She will guide it so that I don't even think about it, but end up independent, free, all those words are on one side of the page and on the other side is, you know, trapped, you know, whatever words go with that. All of us, when that happens, she see, uh, what I now know is she's indicating there is this duality, this two sides, which is the world we live in. But there's always a place where I will say to somebody, when that comes, she's trying to show there's a place they need to come together. Like there's this side and there's this side, but there's a place they need to come together. So that's another way she started communicating. It's like, as soon as I see it, I go, okay, that's that's what she wants us to bring attention to. Because, you know, free and trapped, there's something in the middle. I mean, in the middle is always love, if, if we want to just bring a word to it. In the middle is always love. But it's like there is somewhere we can kind of bring those two seemingly opposing parts into the middle. So I know we didn't talk about that before, but that, you know, when we talked about, the way that she communicates but so or or I'm writing and she, you know she'll make me draw a big circle around something and I just keep taking what you know somebody is saying and then at the end I say hmm it's interesting because you know what she's kind of highlighted on my page or what's jumping out is you know such a word or such an event that you've mentioned so she really does guide it um and as as I think Mary said, I mean, that wasn't day one. That just, you know, that's been a lot of work to, to kind of really, is it me? Is it her? And I have no idea where it changed, but but it had. And and that's, so that that is a very predominant way that she communicates. And th- there are two others I wanted to mention, but well, do I need to pause or will I keep going? No, uh, no, 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 no. You, you, okay. you have our attention. <laughs> All right. Okay. The, the other two, one is metaphor and images. I mean, for, for me, you know, if, if I close wait, my wait, eyes. Wait, wait, say it again. Measure image, say it uh, again. M- metaphor. Oh, metaphor. Or, or images, you know. Metaphor or images, okay. Wh- whatever way we want to. Um, uh, yeah, and, and I, I mean, a simple one that she shows from time to time, but I mean, they're usually all very different, is an image of, you know, a fairly fast flowing river um, and like where logging has gone on. I mean, I don't live in a country that has logging, but, you know, and, and these huge logs are, are like being sent down the river. And she'll show a place where it's just all got jammed and they've all got kind of jammed together. And often if that image comes or that metaphor comes, it's like there's something stuck in what the client or I are trying to work on. And I would just say, why don't we bring her into the image of all these, these, these logs, you know, just why don't we just, this, this is the scene. Why don't we bring her in? Um, 
And quite often, you know, you just close your eyes and the next thing, I don't know, she's kind of there standing on one of them with a little stick and she's aligning things or she allows them to start to flow the right direction. It will lead to something else. I'm not saying it's the whole kind of thing sorted, but it's like she's showing there's this real, my word would be energy block. And that until that bit is freed up, it's like that has to free up first to allow a little bit of flow for whatever it is is going to unfold afterwards. Um, and then the, the third is, I mean, I... Well, wait, I may, may, I, may I interject for a second you before may. you go to number three about number two? One of the things that was occurring to me with these metaphors and the log jam you were talking about, um, this would be how unseen therapists might speak to me about that here's the metaphor here's the log gem let's bring the metaphor to the attention of the client if i'm dealing with somebody and let's say is there a log gem in your life uh, this thing you're talking about this issue you're talking about it seems to me less like a log jam is it not well what would you do about the log jam and in, 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 involve them in the log jam so they, they, with unseen therapist's help, you know, come up with a solution of theirs rather than one that I sort of magically bring up and, and may seem like it's being imposed upon them. Okay. That's just my thought. Go, please, please, go on to number three. Perfect. Number three is I hear her words. So I was thinking earlier, I mean, I hear her very clearly, but what I was thinking was I don't, necessarily hear a voice in my ear I just hear her words is, is how I would describe it um and I guess because this is very topic at the moment because this webinar has been you know we, we knew this was happening and then we've had this conversation you know in our group with you a little while ago about communicating with her it seems to have kind of opened the floodgates like I'm kind of hearing her all the time now you know just just randomly and I mean one example I I I I used to wake up and I still can do in the mornings feeling anxious, like a really old childhood thing. And it had got way better. And every now and again, it kind of raises its head and I'll wake up. And within 30 seconds, like, oh, there's those butterflies. There's that feeling, you know, it's kind of there again. Um, and I woke up I don't know, a week or two ago and, and I had that. You know, oh, God, there's that anxious feeling. And she said really clearly, she said, no, no, she said, that's not that, she said, you're just overwhelmed. You've too much on, you know, and, and she was absolutely right. I mean, I had a list like this for that day. I hadn't even thought to ask her, you know, oh, help with my anxiety or, oh, I don't like this or, you know, what's this about? She just, she spoke before I'd even fully woken up and she said, no, no, it's not that, you know, it's just, uh, it's overwhelmed. You've too much going on. Um, the, the, the other thing, um, I, I was, and I have, yeah, I mean, this isn't going to reveal anyone's identity, but I have permission to kind of share this. Um, I was working with a client on Friday, and as I was, uh, literally walked in the door of this room where I work from, and as I was walking in the door, I heard the unseen therapist say, as clearly as anything, she said, ask him, what's the worst thing that ever happened in your life? So I thought, okay, so I, I sit down, we open Zoom. Um, and, and at the beginning, I said, OK, this question has come to ask you, like, what is the worst thing that has ever happened in your life? Um, this is somebody who's got um, uh, you know, a chronic physical issue, shall we say. And uh, we've worked on some stuff from childhood. And anyway, work is ongoing. Um, so you would. Well, my expectation, I didn't have time to think, would be, oh, I was five, I was 10, I was whatever. The answer straight away that came was, oh, that's two years ago. And there was like within instant, there was a sudden dramatic physical kind of change that was really kind of life changing. Like there was a, you know, an instant that happened. Um, so that's what came up. I said, OK, wow, well, there's a really specific like, you know, the time when I did it, you know, there we have this really specific, beautiful, like instant. I said, let's go in with the unseen therapist to that, you know, and what that might have been like and, you know, all of that. So we close our eyes. Um, and as we do, I hear the, unseen, I'm writing, but I hear the unseen therapist say uh, to the client, because I often hear her kind of talking. 
really dented, like a like indented, like a bash on a car. You know, you've been really dented when that happened. And and she just said it sounded like nothing. And it surprised you, you know, when you got out of your car to see the size of the dent. This was her kind of metaphor she was presenting. And then she went on to say, oh, and, you know, this dent needs the unseen therapist body repair shop. And she proceeded to bring it to the body repair shop. This was all, with, you know, in two or three minutes with my eyes closed. Obviously, the client is doing the same thing, but not aware all of this is going on for me. So she showed this substantial dent and she had this tiny hammer and she was working in circles from the outside in, just gently tapping it out, tapping it out, tapping it out. It got to the place where there was a tiny pea sized little piece that wasn't quite tapped out. And she said, it's just not quite ready for that yet. She said, it's tiny, but it's really vital. So I thought, OK, I opened my eyes um, came back and explained to the person I was working with, this is what she showed me. Um, he said, oh, because roughly 10 months before this major physical kind of shift that happened in a negative way, he said, oh, I was driving through traffic lights and a car came from the other direction and, you know, probably broke a red light and, you know, primed into the side of me. The car was totaled and I was taken to hospital. That then unfolded, I won't be long, but that then unfolded two things. The shock of, you know, as anyone who's been in a car and something comes from nowhere, that's shock number one. But shock number two was hearing the car had been totaled because it didn't feel, which was exactly what she said. It's like, it sounded like nothing. And the surprise that you got when you kind of realized, you know, oh my gosh, this is way worse than it is. Anyway, we, you know, we went in around the shock and we did all of that, but at the very end, I said, I'm really drawn to go back to this tiny little piece-sized dent that's left. You know, it's it's there. Why don't we just go back in and see? So we went back in and the unseen therapist said, there's resistance. And she said, I need to reassure him I'm not going to pull it or tap it out until he's ready. Like, it is his choice. He's free will. There's complete resistance. And then suddenly I saw an image of it fixed, like just beautiful, shiny, side of a car um, and he was red it was a red painted car um came back you know relayed this and I just said uh, we're nearly at the end of the session I said you know I said I know it's very literal but often for me when there's red in an image there's anger somewhere which unfolded an anger of a previous couple of days that we then worked on so I mean it was just this kind of leapfrogging along and it was all about listening to her no it's 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 not time yet. Leave the dent. Da, 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 go to this bit. Go to that bit. But anyway, it's very fresh in my mind because it was only on on sure. Friday. So anyway, and, that's and that that's the kind of thing. That's the kind of thing, which to me is, is one of the ultimate tools of really doing therapy well. Is being able to ask unseen therapists what's really going on here instead of trying to do, do detective work. And you were giving sort of a blow by blow description with this metaphor showing you all kinds of things. Mm. I got that. Did I get that right? You got that bang on, yes. <laughs> all right. Okay, good. All right. Uh, uh, now, Nami, let me shift to you for a second, if I can. Uh, those who were tuned into the last public webinar that we did are aware of your, of your experience where you were giving birth. I'm, I'm going to summarize it for those who didn't know about it. Okay. And the doctors and nurses wanted to do a cesarean section, which you know, having had one before, you weren't in favor of that. You ask unseen therapists, what now? Because of all the labor difficulty, 16 hours worth. And she said, get on your hands and knees and the baby will come flying out. <laughs> now that's a really interesting message because <laughs> nobody, nobody's going to buy that on the, on the surface, but you did and got on your hands and knees and baby came flying out. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was one example of communicating with unseen therapists, a rather dramatic example. But you have others that you use. Can you talk about them? Mm -hmm. The main way I realized, because before I paid attention to how she communicates with me, I hadn't really thought about it. But as we've discussed in our groups, the main way I communicate with her is I hear her in my right ear. And that's clued me in 
to separate that from my ego chatter. Because if I hear it specifically in my right ear and I feel sometimes like a, a buzzing or like a warmth around my ear, then I know, okay, this is not me. <laughs> this is from the unseen therapist. Uh. So that's one of the ways I've been able to distinguish and hear her and she'll just talk to me. So it's like a conversation she has with me. Other way she communicates with me is through thoughts, right? So just a thought will appear in my mind. And those are the ones to very easily doubt because my ego also puts thoughts in my mind. So I think like Mary mentioned, getting validation from other people has, has really helped me to just trust and go with it. When other people agree with the crazy things I might be saying, um, I just tend to trust more because I'm getting validation from other people that it does make sense. It does resonate. Um, I also tend to see vision. So if I close my eyes, I can visually see images of, you know, a childhood event come up or this come up, or I did see myself going on my hands and knees, even though I didn't want to move when I was in labor, I was in, I was in so much discomfort. I was like, I don't really want to move, but she showed me visually me doing it as well. So I thought, well, I've trusted her so far. I might as well <laughs> trust her at this point, even though I didn't feel like I could physically move myself. Um, yeah. So visually she, she'll show me, but she also like tells me things as well. Um, messages from other people. I have to learn to trust that other people may say things. And if I pay attention and it resonates, I should listen to what they say and do it. Because the message is sometimes if I'm not listening to her on my own, if it comes from someone else and it resonates, I need to follow through because that is probably some type of resistance I have within myself for not listening to her. If she's giving me messages, I need to listen to when other people do it too. That I think is another way she communicates with me. And also through feelings. So I'll sometimes get like a feeling and especially the feelings of like stress or anxiety or any negative feelings, that's recently really become a cue for me to tune in even deeper with the unseen therapist to ask her, okay, what's going on with this? What do I need to work on? Because it's really this feeling of you need to work on this. This is not resolved. Or other times it's like really a feeling of like just utter peace, right? Like I'm at the park, the trees are beautiful and the kids are playing in the sand. And it's those moments where I'm reminded of, oh, I need to connect to this feeling more, right? This is the feeling that I would like to have more of, right? So sometimes it's feelings as well. But I find in anything that comes up, if I can just ask for clarification, she will often just clarify things for me. If I don't understand something or if I think I didn't hear it right, I'll say, is that, is that what you meant? Or I have a whole conversation with her in my mind. Um, like, can I get more information about that? Like, I didn't understand this. And so that's what I've been really developing this like communication with her where I don't leave it to my ego. I don't leave it to my mind to come up with understanding or clarity. I really just keep asking her and, I refer to her as really the greatest source of wisdom because she hasn't done me wrong. <laughs> and I think that's another reason faith and trust can build. She just hasn't led me astray. And all those moments where I doubt her messages or I doubt, she's never led me down a path where I felt worse or things have become even more unmanageable. So I would just want to recommend to everyone to just keep trying, keep asking, and the trust can get built. And also to know that even if you don't find a connection right away, she is ever present and loving and is patient and will continue to repeat messages to you, hammer away certain messages to you. So even if at first you don't trust a certain message, like just have faith that she'll, she'll send it to you again in another way and another way and another way. So there's no need to worry. <laughs> she'll get a message through as long as I think you're open to listening and open to accepting it at some point, even if there's resistance to just know that she is there to always offer her guidance and help. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to add was, um, the feeling of like love versus fear, like if a message comes through and it fills you with more fear or more anxiety than 
it may be the ego and more your mind, right? But if, it, if a message comes through and it just seems, even if it doesn't make sense at first, if it just seems loving, if it just seems from like a true peaceful and truly unconditional loving place, that is usually the unseen therapist. So distinguishing between like the feeling you get from a message or what the message includes in it, if it's of love, it's often the unseen therapist. If it's of doubt and fears, it, that may be more your mind chatter and more the ego side of things. So that's another way I was, I've been practicing to distinguish between messages. Well, um, let, me, let, let me suggest if I may, just to put something in there on that, la on that last point. <clears throat> If you're having a relationship issue, you're arguing with somebody, okay, and you get a message from the unseen, you get a message about what to do. The unseen therapist is not going to say, "Not going to tell you this is what you need to say to put that person in their place." Okay, that's very combative. It's a, that, that may be what your ego wants to hear. By the way, <laughs> you know, how can I win this argument now? Okay. No, it's going to be more, it's going to be more like, ah, you know, there, there'll be a message of peace somehow. Message, but how did we ever get to this point? I said, that would be, it would be an interesting question, but that's a more peaceful approach rather than this is the magic thing to say to put them down. So that's an aversion. That's a version of what you're talking about. You're going to get a, your message is going to be peaceful from unseen therapists rather than combative. Did I say it right? Yes. Okay. I have an example of that. Um, my six-year-old son <laughs> woke up one morning wanting to go to the library. We've been, it's been closed for a long time. So he's just like, I wanna go to the library. I wanna go to the library. We put books on hold. I wanna go to the library. And I said, okay, we're, we'll go to the library today. I just have to feed baby first so that he's full. And he would not stop pestering me. And I said, I kept trying, like, yes, I, I understand you want to go. I tried to empathize with him. I really tried to, like, help him understand, like, if baby's not fed, he'll cry in the car. Like, you know, all these things. And he just kept pestering as I changed, as I tried to feed baby, like, all morning. And then I thought, oh, I should ask the unseen therapist, what would she say? And she, I asked her to just fill my mouth with words that, that she would say to my son. And she said, to my son or well, through me but she said you know the library isn't even open yet if we went there now we would have to wait in the parking lot until the library opened do you think it's a good idea to wait in the parking lot in the car or do you think it's a better idea to wait at home well and you can play with your toys while we waited until the library opened what do you think and he looked at me as though he was really thinking about it and I know he hates his car seat. Like he doesn't like the buckle in it. He wouldn't want to stay in the car. And he looked at me and said, okay, I'm going to go play until we can go to the library. And off he went, <laughs> didn't say a word after that. And I was left stunned because literally a hundred times he'd asked to go to the library in so many different ways. And that one way of putting it, put him at ease. He went to play. And when I was ready, we went to the library. So yeah, you know, how, it works in magical ways. <laughs> how perfect is that? I hope everybody listening in is hearing this, okay? How perfect is it? Because how often do we have these conflicting or arguing or whatever combative type problems that show up in our world? And if we stop and just ask, you know, for that kind of response, how easy that is, how it just solve things so nicely. But yet we don't, we tend not to trust it. We want to go with our, what our ego is telling us. And so it's a new skill. That's why, it, that's why this takes practice. Our ego wants to take over. And that's why I wanted to have all you guys on today because you're, uh, you, it's taken a while. Yes, yes, yes. We're not saying it's a magic overnight thing and we're still working on it, myself included and Sherry included and everything else. Okay. But getting there, the journey itself is worth it. But as you get there, you know, there's a lot of peace shows up in your world. A lot of peace. And that's what we're after here. Well, Gary, I, I just wanted to add something quickly. Sure. If people are listening to this and they're thinking, well, they sound incredible. How did they have those experiences? I never will have those kinds of experiences. I can tell you, I know Mary and Anne and Nami for several years. 
And if they were speaking several years ago, they wouldn't be talking about all these experiences. I think I'm right. Um, that together, working together, we developed our skill. And, um, and as, as Mary said, as we would get information and then confirmation from other people in the group that what we got was real, we started to trust more and more. So yeah. it is, it's a, we, we didn't start off this way. That's my point. Well, the, the, other, the other thing about that is, is that within the four of you, and that's one of the really big values of our practice groups, you develop trust with each other. So you can say, I get this. And the others aren't going to say, oh, that's stupid or something like that. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> you, know, you start working together. Well, what could this mean? And, and, and you start to develop, develop those skills in a safe environment. Yeah. Okay. Our ego, our ego wants to dominate, as people can recognize. <laughs> okay. But there's a, a more appropriate dominating force, if you will allow it to happen. And domination may not be the right word. It's more like, it's more like, it, 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 it's a power. It's a power that is not defined by being bigger than, better than, stronger than, richer than, prettier than. It isn't that kind of power. It's the power of love. It's the power of peace. It's a different kind of power, but it's an overwhelming power in its own right but we have to get there get there get there get there so good point anything else guys before we close up i just i wanted, wanted to, to oh sorry. sorry i wanted to thank nami for bringing that up because um it is possibly the most important way that i use it in my own personal life having two adolescent sons where you get to the end of your tether, not knowing what to say, and you've tried everything, as Nami was saying with her son, and you lose your patience and you get tired from it. And to have that moment's grace where you can say, oh, my God, I'm not alone with this situation. I can just ask her. I can ask for help. And I just say, OK, send me the right words, say the right thing through me. And it's a way of relaxing into that and having faith and trust. And it's never let me down. With my sons, I'm always, like Nami said, astonished with the information that comes out that's really calm and peaceful and just reassuring that you're not always alone in these situations and she's there to help us and there is so much love available. We just need to ask, listen and answer. So thank you. That's what I wanted to say. Okay, nice. Anybody else? I just wanted to add that the other thing that I really try to be consistent with is a gratitude where I thank the unseen therapist. I really try to go into the feeling of gratitude because when I settle into gratitude for her messages, for her guidance, for her help, I feel like it's really opened me up to so much more, right? More messages in more different ways. So if you can't connect, I think just settling into gratitude of the possibility of connecting or the gratitude of somebody else maybe sending you a message like that settling into gratitude has i think opened me up to more messages and i encourage everyone to settle yeah. into gratitude for the even the existence of the unseen therapist <laughs> the gratitude thing thank you for that nami the gratitude thing is a big deal to me one of the things that that i hope to put forward in you know my book and our course and all of this has to do that we really we at our essence there's a oneness that that connects us all that we're not aware of but there is this absolute beauty underneath all of this that we need to connect to and, and i hope i don't get too emotional here okay but to me while we focus you know, within our course and all this on healings, somebody's got a disease, somebody's got some emotional issues and all of that. There's a much more useful, much bigger picture here. It should be clear to most everybody, the political environment we live in now is not all that friendly, okay? And there are lots of things going on and, and I would love to see the day when not only you and I 
develop our skills with the unseen therapy, with this beauty within. And instead of having our ego, you know, our, our, our need to triumph, our need to be bigger than and better than and, and, and all the stuff that makes countries go to war with other countries, for example, actually causes poverty, domestic abuse, and so on goes the list of problems. But if we start within ourselves and start to get this, we will radiate it. Others will pick it up. I want what you got will be the sort of internal thing people pick up as they see you radiate this. To me, this is the way to solve our world's problems. We start with ourselves. We don't sit here and pray that the whole world's gonna be better, we start with ourselves. And eventually as it starts growing, it gets very contagious. The, world, the world's leaders, the politicians, those who are in power, We'll start to see this and the kind of things that shape seem to shape this illusionary world will start shaping it towards the oneness world we have i think within us the absolute solution to the world's problems but we need to start with ourselves anyway that's my little philosophy philosophy for the moment sherry anything else to say before we close up well, just to uh, affirm your wonderful philosophy, Gary, that is what we need to do. We all want to go out there somewhere and help heal the world, but we start in here. And the more calm we are, the more peaceful, the more loving, that's what we radiate out. And so Unseen Therapist has always wanted to communicate with us but I think now more than ever, she really wants us to hear her. So if you feel like, well, I don't know if I can do this. I've listened to all these wonderful ladies talk about their experiences. And I think Marion said when we first started, was that where we were all at? No, they've been working together and working and working and developed some amazing abilities to communicate we all not only can, but unseen therapists, I think especially now, really wants us to work to develop the ability to hear her because we're making this whole thing a whole lot more complicated than it needs to be. She is here for all of us. And this is an endeavor well worth the time and effort. All right. Okay. Well, let me give everybody my great big, California hug. We're going to close this up for now. I'm going to, I'm going to leave this open for a while because I would love to please, 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 those of you with us, would you please um, leave me some messages in the chat box. Let me know what you liked about this, didn't like about it. How could we improve it? All of that, I read every word, every word of it. And that helps me refine all this and so on. So we make it better and better and better. So until next time. This is for everybody. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.